How you doing guys, welcome to another video. This is topic 14.1, extra applications of covalent bonding. And in this one, we look at formal charge. Let's go. Okay, volume nine, what is formal charge? We look at calculating the formal charge and then we also have a look at resonance structures. The IB understandings and applications and skills focus around this concept of formal charge and then how we can apply it to delocalization and then resonance structures. And we look at drawing some of those structures as well. Then the skill is to determine which is the most stable or likely configuration from a Lewis diagram using formal charge. So when we have a Lewis diagram, sometimes we might have more than one way to draw it, especially when we have elements that expand their octet. Now the formula chart, the the formal charge formula is equal to the valence electrons take away a half times the bonding electrons plus the number of lone electrons. The formal charge is calculated on each atom in a molecule. Now when we determine something to be the most stable, we're looking for the formal charge to be closest to zero or to have a negative charge on the more electronegative atoms. So if we take the examples on the left hand side, we've got two different examples for boron trifluoride, BF3. Now what we need to do is go through and calculate the formal charge on each of the atoms. So for the first one, the first fluorine, it has seven valence electrons, and then we want to time, take away that from a half times the number of bonding electrons. Every single covalent bond has two, so it's a half times two, plus the number of lone electrons, which in this case is six. So that gives us a formal charge of zero. The other fluorine is in the identical environment, so it also has a formal charge of zero. The final fluorine has a double bond, so that means it will have a different formal charge. Calculating the formal charge on the fluorine gives us one. We also need to calculate the formal charge on the boron. So boron has three valence electrons, and then we take that away from a half times the number of bonding electrons. Here, boron has four bonds, so that means it's got eight bonding electrons, and it has no lone pairs. So that gives it a formal charge of minus one. In the example on the left, well, we've got three fluorines in an identical condition to the one of the fluorines in the first diagram. So we have three zeros for that fluorine. Then we just need to calculate the formal charge on the boron, which will be different because it doesn't have a double bond. Now it has a formal charge of zero. So here we can see that the example on the left is closest to zero, or the difference is closest to zero. So that means that that molecule will be the most stable configuration of the two. And if we were drawing a Lewis diagram, we would need to refer to that diagram. So you might be asked to use the concept of formal charge to determine which of the following Lewis structures for a certain compound is preferred. So here we have SO2. So again, we need to go through and find the formal charge of each atom in the molecule, and then we can work out which one is the more likely. So for the first one, we have an oxygen here. It has six valence electrons, take away a half times the number of bonding electrons plus the number of lone pairs, which gives us zero. We have a sulfur which has six valence electrons. We take that away from the number of bonding electrons and multiply it by a half plus the number of lone pairs. And then the other oxygen, it was different from the first oxygen. So we apply the formal charge formula to work out that its formal charge is equal to negative one. So here we have zero, one and negative one. Not quite zero, but it's pretty good because oxygen would be more electronegative than sulfur. In the other example, we have two oxygens that have a formal charge of zero. Again, they're in the same environment as the one on the right. So now we just have to look at the sulfur. And in this case, the sulfur has a formal charge of zero. So because all of those have a formal charge of zero, the diagram on the left would be the most favored in this case. So SO2 has the bent configuration with one lone pair sticking out the top. For the second one, again, same idea. Use the concept of formal charge to determine which of the following Lewis structures for ZE, XEO3 is preferred. So again, we have to do the formula for each of the atoms in the molecule. And here I've actually just calculated that we've got xenon has a formal charge of two, oxygen has a formal charge of minus one, zero, and minus one. 
And on the right hand side, we can also work out the form the formal charges. We know that from the left hand from the right hand side we've got zeros if it's got a double bond, and the xenon will change slightly, but it is also zero. So the structure on the left would be favored in this case because again it's closest to zero. <coughs> okay, a resonant structure involves using two or more Lewis structures to represent the same molecule or ion. Resonant structures show the delocalization of electron, that is the electrons that are shared between all of the atoms in the molecule or ion, as opposed to being isolated between two atoms. A delocalization will be able to move between bonds in the atoms, whereas a localized electron is stuck in a particular covalent bond. So for example, the nitrite anion, it's shown below, it has a resonance structure where, just imagine the double bond flipping from the oxygen on the right to the oxygen on the left. The structure hasn't changed, it's in fact the same thing. All that's happened is it has resonated. The electrons in the double bond have now moved to the other side of the nitrogen. So it's, an, it's a resonance structure because the electrons now belong to all of the atoms and they're not simply just fixed in position. So resonance means that they're able to move from one position to the other. Now if we're asked to draw the resonance structure for one of these atoms or, or ions, what we need to do is represent the resonance with a dotted line. So we have the nitrogen with its lone pair of electrons and then we have it connected to two oxygens. Each will have a pa two pairs of lone electrons. And then to represent that the electron can be found between both of those oxygen atoms, we draw a dotted line to represent that there is resonance in this molecule and that those electrons could be found either between one of the nitrogens. Now bond order describes the strength of the bond. And the way that we can work out the bond order is to determine the number of bonds between nitrogen and oxygen divided by the number of locations where the electrons can be found. So the number of NO bonds is three. We have three bonds between nitrogen and oxygen. The number of locations for these bonds is two because we have two different places where they can be found. So the bond order is 1.5. That means it's stronger than a single bond, but not quite as strong as a double bond. So the carbonate ion, CO3 2 minus, also shows a resonance structure. And it actually has three resonance structures that we can show. But the first thing we would need to do is what does the carbonate ion actually look like? So we can apply a little trick which we talked about in the last video where we work out the number of electrons in the molecule or ion and in this case we have carbon which has four, we have three oxygen so it's three times six and then the two minus means we've got two extra electrons. That means we have 24 electrons in total. Now we divide that by two to work out the number of electron pairs. So here we have 12 pairs of electrons. So we need to arrange those electrons around the carbon with the three oxygens to determine the Lewis structure. So because the carbon will be connected to three oxygens, it will be in a triangular planar arrangement. The carbon needs to have four bonds, so it will have a double bond between one of the oxygens and the carbon. We can put in the lone pairs of oxygens then. Each oxygen will have two lone pairs. And then you can probably see now that we've actually got two less pairs of electrons. So that means the oxygens that don't have the double bond must have those extra electrons. It is a negatively charged ion, so those oxygens could have accepted an electron. So what can happen here is one of the lone pairs on one of the oxygens could then move to create a double, carb a double bond between the carbon and the oxygen atom. While that happens, the electrons in the double bond now move to the oxygen by themselves to create another lone pair. So we get this resonance or resonating of the electrons between different oxygen atoms. It's the same molecule, except all that's happening is that the electrons are moving between the carbon-oxygen bonds. So we say it is a resonance structure because those electrons don't belong to one oxygen, they belong to all of the oxygens. So we can draw the three different resonance structures, they're all too negatively charged. 
my dots are a little bit bad. It's really hard to draw dots on this program as well, by the way. If you know a different one, let me know. Okay, so if we need to show the resonance structure, we would need to show where the dotted lines occur. And because this one has three locations, it's a little bit different to the last one. Each oxygen will have two lone pairs, so we can draw in the two lone pairs of electrons, and then we show the resonance via dotted lines between the carbon and the oxygen. Remembering that it will have a two negative charge as well, so I would need to put that in. The bond order can be determined for the carbonate ion as well. Remember the bond order is the number of carbon to oxygen bonds, in this case, divided by the number of locations. So we have four carbon to oxygen bonds, we have three locations, so we have a 1.33 bond order. So that means it would be shorter than a carbon to oxygen single bond, but a lot longer than a carbon to oxygen double bond. Okay, so volume nine, some top tips. The formal charge formula is not in the data book, so you have to remember it. And remember that resonance structures, they have electrons that belong to all of the atoms in the resonance structure. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.